everyone, Terry Welbrock here. Just wanted to take a moment before today's episode to share some exciting announcements. I love to share all my exciting announcements and fun things that are going on in my life. So a couple more narrated audiobooks have hit the shelves. You can check those out. If you go to my website, terrywellbrock.com, you can find uh, different tabs on my website. So there's speaking tabs. So if I've spoken on summits or podcasts, and you can go listen to those. Uh, if you want to know my insights on the world and life. And then um, there's a books tab. And so that will list my audio books and that I've narrated. And there's now seven that are completed, two more in the works. And uh, so if you know of anyone who's written a book or if you yourself has and looking for a narrator, please reach out to me. You can send me an email at info at terrywellbrock.com, info at terrywellbrock.com. Some of the other tabs on my uh, website include the podcast, the Healers of Hilton Head series. There's a tab for that. And the, um, as I'm liking to call it, the financial health tab. So let's talk about some products that I can help you with. I have all kinds of fun stuff from living benefits to mortgage protection to life insurance to uh, college savings accounts for your kiddos, retirement accounts, um, a debt-free life program. Wow, I'm learning about that. And it's one of my favorites. Absolutely amazing. So if you have credit cards, student loans, mortgage, all that fun stuff, we have an amazing, amazing, amazing product to talk about. So Scott's going to be joining me uh, mid-episode to talk a little bit about that, Scott Summers. Uh, here on Hilton Head Island. And uh, so, yeah, you can learn a little bit more about each of those things. All right. Now for today's very informational and educational interview. Welcome, everybody, to the Healing Place podcast. I'm your host, Terry Welbrock, and very excited to have with me today Rick Olderman. And he is a sports and orthopedic physical therapist with more than 25 years experience specializing in helping people with chronic pain experience a pain-free life. Rick has created the Fixing You Method to help people with chronic pain or injuries. So welcome, Rick. Hey, thanks, Harry. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, I just told you before hitting record, I'm I'm super excited. We haven't had a lot of folks on to talk about the, the pain uh, part of gosh, you know, we talk about trauma history so much and, and the impacts of uh, trauma. But it really does. I know from studying ACEs science, which is adverse childhood experiences, how those of us with with ACE scores of four or more, um, we store it in our bodies, and then it come we come into adulthood if we haven't processed it as children, come into adulthood, and suddenly we're having the, all of this heightened chance of disease and pain, and all of these things come to the surface because of the stored trauma. Absolutely. And it, it, in terms of my experience, I believe that the stored trauma is occurring in certain patterns in the body. And so uh, this is what I've been kind of uncovering over the last 20 years or so of my practice is trying to understand how and why this is happening and, you know, the significance of those patterns. So, in fact, uh, I, I'm currently writing another book that'll be due out in 2024 about this very thing, because I think it's the missing link to a lot of the information I have out there is the reasoning behind why I'm asking people to do what they do to, to get better. Yes. Well, I told you, I watched your video on your website and everyone, I'll put the links and show notes so you can, you can go check it out yourself. Um, and, and the question that kept, you kept repeating was the why, 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 why? And, and all I kept thinking was, oh, root cause, root cause, root cause. <laughs> Yeah. But the thing is, Terry, is that your root cause may be different than my root cause in terms of a practitioner. So for instance, um, let's take, you know, a surgeon might think the root cause is a surgical issue and a physical therapist would think it is a musculoskeletal issue. A chiropractor will believe it's a spinal alignment issue. A massage therapist will believe that it's a muscle tension issue. And so none of, it's not that any of them are wrong, but I, I find that it's not a complete picture. And so um, that's what I've been after is understanding the complete picture. 
Yeah. So your programs, it, it dives into really it's individualized for each person to answer their own whys then. Yeah. So like I said at the beginning, uh, these patterns of dysfunction that are occurring because of trauma, it gets lodged in our body in usually one of three different patterns. And I heard you mention the startle reflex pattern on one of your shows a little while ago. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Landau reflex pattern and the withdrawal reflex patterns. No. Okay. So these are all ancient uh, reflexes that we're born with that are in, you know, housed in the deeper, older parts of our brain, like the brain stem or the, the subcortical areas and so forth. And so these, uh, the, for instance, the startle reflex, or it's also called the moral reflex occurs, you know, and, and part of that is, you know, a loud clapping noise will cause us to blink. And often the shoulders will shrug up, you know, things like that. Our upper body will flex. Uh, it also engages the abdominal muscles too. So it's, we're, and, you know, most of us are thinking about reflexes as like the knee reflex. You, ha you have someone who taps your hammer on your knee and your foot jumps up. Well, uh, that's a, you know, a one joint or two joint type of reflex, but a startle reflex is multiple joints and multiple muscles. The same with Landau reflex is another pattern that we're born with. And that we can tap into that a few months after we're born to help us lift our head. So our back arches, our neck muscles engage, you know, this type of stuff. And this also, uh, becomes engaged when we are coming to this fully alert position, right? We arch our back, we get taller so we can see what's going on. And then the last uh, reflex pattern is a withdrawal reflex pattern, where if we step on, say, a tack or something, we immediately lift our foot off of that tack, right? So that's a withdrawal reflex pattern. So that lifting our foot off isn't just flexing the hip. It's also flexing the waist muscles to lift the, that side of the pelvis to also lift the hip. But that also uh, triggers something called a cross extensor reflex, because if we lift one foot, we better be sure that our other foot is going to be weight, weight bearing. And so all of this happens neurologically in a reflex pattern in our body where one leg is lifting, the other leg is standing firm to hold us up while we're withdrawing. So um, I can go deeply into all of this if you want, but basically these are the three patterns that uh, I have found most emotional trauma is being housed in. Uh, because the, even though we're born with these patterns, and we eventually you know, grow out of them, they never actually leave our hard wiring in our body. And for instance, that Landau reflex, you know, you walk in the woods at night and you hear a crack, you know, and you're immediately alert. And that's, you're tapping into that ancient reflex pattern. You know, anytime you step on a pebble on the, on the ground, even though this is more of a, a neonatal type of reflex, we still have all of that hard wiring in our body that's there ready to be tapped into. And so I found that emotional trauma is tapping into these larger reflex patterns in the body. Wow. So fascinating. And I totally have to ask, and, and maybe this has nothing to do with it, but I noticed because I'm, I'm an observer, I, I, I'm a researcher. I love to like, I'm my own best experiment. <laughs> and so I, I pay attention to what, what's happening with me. And I had taken our dog and we, we were out taking a walk. And this was when we first moved to, to Hilton Head Island. And so I saw this amazing big blue heron bird and it was sitting at the end of a pier. And I was like, oh my gosh, Sammy, let's go check it out. Be a good girl. Like, don't bark at it. And we started walking out, walking out, walking out. Well, I have a horrific fear of bridges and open spaces. Well, I was so mesmerized by this bird and I walked out and so then the bird flew off and I turned around and I realized, oh crap, I walked out way further than I would normally be comfortable. But my instant reaction I covered my head and I ducked down and I just kind of went down into like this fetal position. It was so instantaneous, yeah. uh, like reflex. And yes. I thought, oh, like I'm protecting myself. Like I felt that instant fear right. and it was like, oh, so is that what you're talking about? Like that kind that's of reflex? Ex that's exactly what I'm talking about. And so, you know, these reflexes are not, I mean, even though this involves multiple joints and muscles, you know, there's fascia. Uh, that's holding us together, right? It's the master connective tissue. And so fascia, so uh, up to 40% of fascia has sympathetic nervous system uh, nerve endings in it. So the sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight nervous system. So when we are engaged 
you know, traumatically or emotionally, that activates the sympathetic nervous system to respond to that. Well, part of that response is an engagement of our fascial system as well. And guess what? The, there are fascial superhighways that run through the body that are almost identical to these three reflex patterns that we're born with as well. And that's not the only thing. Uh, also, biomechanically, how we move, we, uh, we develop habits of movement that also correspond to these three fascial patterns and three reflex patterns. And these three biomechanical movement patterns also are, are reinforce the fascial and reflex patterns that, we're, that we have. So when we have trauma, we have three methods of that trauma being uh, ingrained in our body. And this is how it's done in part. Wow, fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm just so mesmerized by it all. Hi, everyone. Terry Welbrock here. Just wanted to take a pause mid-episode to have a little conversation with Scott Summers here on Hilton Head Island, where I live. You know, I love to talk about healing resources, whether it's for um, emotional health, spiritual health, physical health. We've tapped upon it all and financial health. So we are going to talk about some financial health products. Retirement savings. I know that's another um, wonderful option for for those with symmetry financial group. Yeah, I think one of the things I typically like to do is if I'm helping a family just with a basic life insurance policy or final expense or mortgage protection, I always let them know, you know, hey, the, the insurance carriers we work with can also help you with a uh, preservation of your retirement assets. So the money that you've been saving up for all these years in your 401k, your TSP, um, you know, however you're doing that, your IRA, um, you can actually move those and change your strategy from all of your accumulation phase. Um, and when you start moving into that place where you're getting close to retirement and you don't want to have any risk at all, then you can actually work with the insurance carriers. You can move your income there, your money there for income later, but it's a total preservation tool. And so I always mention that on my insurance uh, meetings. And it's funny because when the market starts getting really erratic and the market starts going up and down, those are about the times I usually get the calls, you know. And, you know, um, when we do help uh, service clients with um, preservation tools like uh, some of the fixed index annuities that we work with or something of that nature, um, we uh, typically just hope that, you know, they hadn't taken a really big hit on their, um, on their 401k or whatever, whatever way that they're saving. Um, but yeah, great tools. Uh, I've, I've had clients for you know, almost, almost a decade now. Uh, some of them now are in that phase where they're getting that lifetime income, income that you can't outlive too, you know, because uh, that money that you saved up, you can't count on that money when the, the market's going down and you're taking chunks out of that for income, you know, whatever the market does to it uh, can affect that income. So these products that we're working with have lifetime income riders that you can actually, you can outlive. You know, so if you have longevity, for example, you know, that could definitely be a concern. You don't want to have to change your lifestyle in retirement. Right, right. Wonderful. Well, everyone, thanks for, for listening in to our, our little um very informative, wonderful conversations with Scott Summers of the Summers Agency here on Hilton Head Island. And again, go to terrywellbrock.com. You can find out more information and click some tabs if there's anything specific you want to know about. And uh, um, I will be in touch with you. And yeah, now back to the show. So now then do you have exercises? Do people work with you in person? Can you, is it stuff you do virtually? Is it, you know, all of the above? Yeah. So, so knowing that that trauma or any kind of pain that we're having is really, a, especially spinal pain, because frankly, spinal pain is the thing that flummoxes most practitioners, right? Most people, the chronic, almost all chronic pain has to do with the spine in some way, either the cervical spine or lumbar spine. And the reason is, is that I believe that we don't really understand what's going on here with the spine very well. And the reason that's happening is because in medicine, we're trained uh, in what I call component thinking, where we are trained to break down the body into these little pieces 
understand those little pieces, but there's nothing that's putting all those pieces back together again in a, into a system. And so we're all trained in component thinking at the expense of systems thinking. Yeah. One of the reasons we can't be trained in systems thinking is because you can't run double blind studies on systems, right? You can only describe a system. Well, that falls under the lowest, uh, you know, relevance in medical research, you know? Okay, well, that's nice, but, you know, you haven't proven anything to me. Okay, then it, if it hasn't been proven, then it doesn't count. So this is why I believe that most medical practitioners are misunderstanding the spine is because the spine, if we look at the spine, it has all these huge lumbar arms attaching to it, right? We've got the spine and the pelvis, and we've got the long legs and muscles that are going up to the pelvis and the spine and, you know, from our arms and so forth. And so, well, we can't possibly generate research that incorporates everything that involves lifting the arm and how that acts on the, on the, on the low, lower spine. So this just gets glossed over in medicine. But I find this is the secret to solving chronic pain is understanding the body from a system standpoint. So to answer your question, the way I work with people is first we have to understand, you know, which pattern of, of issues you're you're having, right? Is it one, it's one of these three, and it could be two of these three. So we just have to identify that pattern. And then with that pattern are associated tighter weak muscles that that occur. And so, you know, you solve those tighter weak muscles, but really a big driver of pain and these patterns is tension. And that tension is driven by often our fascial system that, you know, when that's activated, it causes the body to still be locked in this pattern. So we can strengthen all we want. We can stretch all we want. We can move better all we want. But if we're, if we haven't addressed the tension aspects, that's locking us in this pattern of issues in the first place, then often you'll just be doomed to come back to your practitioner again and again and again for the same problem. Right. And I think that's one of the things you had addressed in your video was, have you just, you keep going back to the doctor and, or you keep going to see specialists or whatever, and they, right. they just can't figure out what's going on because you're right. It, it's, it's a systems issue. Or, is or they help you temporarily, but you have to come back once a week, once a month, you know, four times a year, whatever that is for the, to fix the same thing. And so if that's happening, then it's not really, it's a temporary solution. It's not really fixing the real problem though. Right, right. When I, when I got really sick over the last couple of years, one of the issues I was having was tinnitus or tinnitus. I, I, I've heard it pronounced both, both ways. Yeah. Um, and, and that's one of those issues that just hasn't just like everything else is so much better. I'm so much better. And that's that one lingering issue. Is that one of those things that it, it's like, um, it is like tension related or, or stress? Yeah, well, I've had a few patients with tinnitus that I've treated. Some have gotten better, some have not. So usually when I see a problem is, a, is unilateral in nature, if it's happening on one side of the body, I generally believe that it is a musculoskeletal system based problem. If it's, if you're having tinnitus in both ears, then it's more likely that this is a deeper, you know, physiological, neurological problem. Instead. Yeah. It's just one. So okay. <laughs> that's so, why I so, asked. <laughs> yeah. So my, my next question would be, uh, and you pointed to your left ear, yeah. correct? Yes. So do you have any older left shoulder, hip, knee, foot, or back issues? Interesting. My left hip has been driving me crazy for, for about the same amount of time. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So I even said to myself the other day, I'm like, I wonder if it's all just related to like this left side of my body. <laughs> so I'll explain to you what could be the connection. All right. So you're now we're talking about that withdrawal reflex pattern. So you've got pain in your left hip. Your brain says, ow, I don't like that, but you still have to walk from A to B. So how am I going to get you to walk to a, from A to B without hurting? Well, I'm just going to hike up your pelvis a little bit to get off that leg so you're not weight bearing on it. Well, the muscles that attach from the pelvis, in, they attach into the rib cage. So they also pull the rib cage down and create what I call a side bending pattern. Okay. So the rib cage is important in this because this is where the shoulder blade rests. And now you set up the shoulder blade for shoulder blade dysfunction. There are muscles that attach from the shoulder blade into the cervical spine and the base of the skull. Well, these have significant impacts on the, uh, on the neck and the head and cause migraine headaches, tension headaches, uh, trigeminal neuralgia, 
And when the few tinnitus people that I've corrected, they've all been unilateral cases. Fixing the shoulder blade is how we corrected that. So this is the connection between the hip and po potentially your ear or neck pain or so forth. Right. I just, I'm so fascinated by how it's all connected. And it, yeah. like the more I learn, the more I just say, oh, it makes so much sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. But what well, a gift The next question people. would be, why are you having hip pain? So right. that, that would then, right? Right. So we had to figure that out. Yes, exactly. I keep saying, oh, it's because I sleep on my left side. So <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And now, so you have, you have programs that people can, can work through, correct? Yes. So my programs address uh, two of the three patterns of issues because two of these, uh, one involving that withdrawal pattern where the pelvis is lifting on one side and the rib cage is depressed on one side. You can imagine that that's creating unilateral pain issues on one side of your body. The second most common pattern is what I call an extension problem, which means that your back is either too arched or you have too many forces trying to pull it into an arch. So people who have this problem are those that when they lie down on their back on the floor, their back feels a lot better when their knees are bent versus when their legs are straight. So that's an easy way to determine if you have an extension problem. So my program, uh, you know, everyone who's been to a physical therapist is, knows a physical therapist gives stretching and strengthening exercises, but that's, that's only a small part of the program. So we fix the tighter weak muscles that are causing this, but we also have to fix the tension that's driving the pattern in the first place. And so I have Hannah Somatics lessons, audio lessons that address each of these patterns and others in the body that are occurring that lo are locking the body in pain, in these pain patterns. Once people release these tension patterns, suddenly the fixes start uh, sticking, right? So you don't have to go back to the same thing again and again. And then the other thing is we have to address how you're moving and using your body that's causing these patterns to occur as well. So my programs address the tighter weak muscles. It addresses the tension pattern that's locking you into this pattern. And then it's also addressing how you're moving that's also causing these tighter weak muscles. So it's a comprehensive but simple kind of fix. Right. Now, returning back to the fascia for just a minute. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has stored trauma, in, in their fascia, is, is this something they can still do or they, do they need to address that issue first? By all means, uh, yes. And what I have found, Terry, is that it works both ways. If you release the musculoskeletal tension, that will help you re release the emotional psychological tension, right? This is the whole thinking behind meditation, right? Is that you relax your body, you calm it down, and it calms your mind as well. It works both ways. So we're, most people think that, oh, I have to like your question. We should address the emotional tension first, but that's not necessarily the case. I've had great success fixing the physical, which then helps them understand the emotional better. It's really yeah. fascinating. It is fascinating. And, and again, yeah. it all comes back to that holistic approach, you know, the mind, body, spirit approach. And uh, when you start to, give attention to one, it is always amazing to me, at least in my experience, how it then has such an impact on the other aspects, the other parts of me. Yeah. So Terry, I've, I've created what I call the three pillars theory of pain. And so I believe that, you know, we all have this threshold above which we have pain. And I believe there are three primary issues that are feeding uh, those, uh, that threshold. There are three pillars of issues. One is musculoskeletal issues, tight or weak muscles, you know, old injuries, things like that, fascia maybe, and these patterns. Another is emotional, psychological, or spiritual issues, right, that then engage our musculoskeletal system to create pain. And the third is things that we ingest, allergens, molds, um, you know, dietary issues. If you go to any self-help section of any bookstore, you'll see that almost all self-help books are broken down into these three basic patterns. And these three basic patterns seem to create, or I'm sorry, these three basic pillars seem to create the, the same three basic patterns of dysfunction in our body that we've been talking about on your show so far. So 
uh, they, and, and your issues may be 20% emotional and 80% musculoskeletal or vice versa. It, you know, it just depends on your personal history. But how all of that is manifest in your body, it all seems to manifest in the same three types of patterns of problems, which makes solving at least the, the musculoskeletal aspect of it pretty simple. Yeah, fascinating. And I and I again I I'm so fascinated. One, well, that you're thank you for saying that everybody's story is different. Everybody's history is different. Genetics are different. Every, every, you know, what they've experienced, what, uh, whether it be from trauma or physical injuries. Um, and so, but it is fascinating that it almost all then funnels down to these three ways of our physical body responding. Yes. We have a reflexive hardwired neurological component, which we're born with those three reflexes that we're born with. We have the fascial components, that create these super highways of connective tissues running through our body that were identified by Thomas Myers. And then Dr. Shirley Sarman identified the three biomechanical movement patterns uh, that, that uh, very closely approximate both of these other two researchers' uh, patterns that they discovered. None of the three researchers under, knew anything of the other. So they are all discovered independently. Dr. Shirley Sarman, who focuses on biomechanical and musculoskeletal issues, was doing her own research. Thomas Myers in fascial research was doing his own research. Thomas Hanna in neurological research was doing his own research. And they all three came up with the exact same three patterns. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So how how do people connect with you? How do they, how do they work with you and find your programs? Uh, you know, the easiest way, Terry, is just go to rickolderman.com and, and you'll see a products tab there and you can download any of my programs. I've made them very affordable. Um, I've also written many books, um, the Fixing You series. You can find that on Amazon. Uh, uh, this year I published uh, Solving the Pain Puzzle, which describes my approach to how I discovered all of this and how I, this, this is case studies that I've had over the 25 years that kind of talk about how all this manifests in the body and how I've used this to solve pain. And um, so that would be the easiest way. Wonderful. Well, I'll, everybody that's listening, that's on the Facebook page, I'll put links up for the book as well or books. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find those easily just go pop on the Facebook page. Um, so I certainly want to give you an opportunity to talk about anything that we, we haven't had a chance to talk about yet. Well, that would take us many, many hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, what I, I, I want to emphasize to your listeners that, you know, many people feel that they are broken because they have not gotten better. And really this has nothing to do with your ability to, to be fixed. It has to do with the information you've received so far. It hasn't been the right information. And I believe it's because most practitioners don't understand the, how the body works as a system. And so this is what I believe you've been missing. It's what almost all of my chronic pain patients have been missing over my last two decades or two and a half decades of work. So I would like to just leave the message that, you know, simply you're not broken. You just haven't had the right information yet. Yeah. And that's such a hope inspired, you know, so much of the show and the work that I do is wanting people to walk away with hope. So that's just such a hope filled message. Thank you for oh, that. Sure. Um, but how do, how, what's your website and how do folks find you? Yeah. The best way to find me is just to go to rickolderman.com and you scroll down. I've got lots of free information on there. I've got my, my home programs that you can purchase if you like. So um, lots of stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you so very much for being here. And um, yes, the, the wonderful work you do to help bring pain-free lifestyle to, to the folks you work with. Well, I, I love what I do. It's fun for me. And, you know, um, I, I feel fortunate to be able to do it. Awesome. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. And remember, until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Terry Welbrock here. Just wanted to thank you again for being a part of this healing space 
and my hashtag hope for healing journey. Thank you for sharing, liking, inviting others to join, listening in. Uh, you've really helped this show blossom. It has now been downloaded in 136 countries and is in the top 2% globally out of 3.2 million shows, which is just amazing. And it's all because of you and your tuning in and inviting others and sharing and liking and loving. And your reviews on Apple really help too. My goal is to hit 100 five-star reviews uh, by the end of the year. And I am closing in on that. So if you are listening in on Apple, or Apple Podcasts, please go and rate the show and leave a review if you absolutely love it. And uh, I would be most appreciative. Also, if you would like to receive my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter, please be sure to go to terrywellbrock.com. It's T-E-R-I, just one R, W-E-L-L-B-R-O-C-K.com. And I have a uh, a gift to send you for signing up for that monthly Hope for Healing newsletter. Plus, there are many other resources listed on that page, including a resource library. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.